Hello and welcome to the NIM developer blog. This time we'll talk about our latest release, NIM version 0.20. This is our first release candidate for the version 1 that we've been waiting for for so long. This video is the first part in a series of three videos where we show what we've been working on. There are lots of bug fixes and improvements in 0.20 and also new developments coming. Okay, I want to start with a simple improvement that, that we did. Now you can have the same module name for, multi for different modules within the same Nimble package. For example, I have a utils.nim file here and I import the different utils from a subtype directory that is not, yeah, it used to be the case that it must be in its own Nimble package, but that's not, that restriction is gone. So now this can work. And also the, if I have a C code file with the same name and I tell them to compile this with, within my project, then this also now works without any name clashes about the, the generated C code. Um, I still think it's a bad idea to use the same file name for everything and only disambiguate via paths, but uh, people requested it and so we, we give them what they want. The second improvement is that now in the compiler's error messages and in the stack traces, we list the full path leading to the problem, which is particularly nice when you have an editor where you can click on the file name to jump to some location. So let me show this. So I'm compiling this program and it, it dies with an assertion failure. And here we have like the full file names so that I can simply click on these and my editor jumps around where this problem uh, really occurs. So this is the final race statement that causes this program to fail. Um, previously, the compiler would produce relative paths here, but then uh, it was a problem because we didn't know relative to what. Um, the compiler said it's relative to the main project NIM file, but Visual Studio Code says, no, 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 it's relative to the current working directory. And now, thanks to absolute file names, it's, it's not ambiguous anymore. Um, you can also turn this feature off again with, uh, I think it's called excessive step trace off. Uh, which is very useful if you have an, uh, uh, a continuous integration service running where you also want to compare the outputs of the, of the programs. Another thing that we had to change was how case objects in NIM work. So um, case objects have been in NIM for a long time and they are more flexible than what Rust offers in its sometimes, for instance, or ML. However, these flex this flexibility caused us some trouble, as we can see in this example here. So I have an enum that is used to switch between two cases within my, my object. So either the int branch is active, and then I have the int val field, or the string branch is active, and then I have a string val field in, in this object. And uh, usually NIM is a memory safe language. So we claim it's memory safe unless you use address, PTR or cast. Um, however, in this example, I compile, like I produced a, a, a crash at runtime, um, even though it's supposed to be memory safe. So let's see how this works. Um, I can still make this work when, by um, using uh, nim all case uh, objects. And uh, I, I define the buggy version of this program. Uh, oh yeah. 
Um, so as we can see here, I created a crash. And the, the reason for that is that I switched the branch from int to string. And this is, was invalid because now the intval field is interpreted as a string. And since 12 is not a valid pointer, once I try to access this as a string, I get a memory corruption in this line 18. So um, the fix for that is, well, we can actually already see the compiler telling us like uh, there's a problem in this line, in this line and in this line, because here we assign to this uh, discriminator field directly. What we should do instead is we should use NIMS object construction syntax so that the compiler as well as the runtime know we are creating a foo here and the active branch is the int branch and the value is 12. And then if we change the object branch, we change, we have to change the whole object like this. And then it's, uh, uh, it's not, it, it won't crash anymore. And I think the, yeah. And the semantics is it creates a new object with a string value inside it. So it's default values picked for the string, which is the empty string. So if I produce the output here, it's, uh, it's the empty string. Um, so usually you should use this syntax here because it's uh, more concise and the NIMS optimizer can also understand it better. However, in macros, it's often easier to generate serialization code when you have, when you generate it as a statement, as a list of statements with assignments inside it. And that's still possible. However, the construction needs to specify what, what branch is active. So, and in, within a macro, I could still uh, generate code like this. Uh, so all it takes is to, to, to nail down the, the object case branch. And then the code works and uh, we fix the, the memory safety problem in them. What we also did was uh, we uh, changed our testing setup so that uh, we compile all the tests we have also in C++ mode. So for an example, uh, this C command here tells NIM to compile case object NIM to C code and then run it. And NIM CPP tells NIM to compile it to C++ code and run it. And I hope it works. Yes, it does. And um, the, so the C++ support is now a, a first class citizen in NIM. And the benefit of C++ code generation are twofold. Uh, reason one is you get much better interoperability with C++ code. Second reason is you also get faster code because we can map NIMS exception handling to C++'s exception handling. And that's much more efficient than, than what we can do in C code, which is uh, using set jump to, to emulate some uh, exception handling. We also changed what uh, the release mean, switch means in NIM. So I've seen many people, too many people, uh, using uh, the release switch to compile their NIM-based server software. And that used to be really dangerous because what used to happen is release means optimize the code and also leave out the runtime checks. So array bounds wouldn't be checked and integer overflows could, could still happen. Um, this is not done with release anymore. Release now means optimize the build. And there's a new switch called danger where we also then re, uh, switch off the runtime checks. And there is an inherent trade-off between uh, safety and speed in, in this case. So whether you want to be, uh, whether your, whether efficiency is more important than safety to you or not depends on your application. So we cannot decide 
for you. You need to decide whether you want to use release or danger. And finally, we took much effort into improving the error messages of the compiler. So here I have an example where I overloaded proc foo twice, once for integers and once for strings. And what's happening is that this is amb this is ambiguous, like actually or, or actually no foo does match this this call. And now the compiler says, uh, I expect that this foo with the integers here, so you should use that. And it doesn't list the string variant because uh, what's usually done is I have some, some object foo and I, I mean, I call foo on the object. So it's likely that I got the first type right, which is this int integer here. And less likely and more likely that I got the second argument wrong. So that's why it says like you want this foo with the integers. However, it also says uh, there's another mismatching symbol that has been suppressed. Compile with show all mismatches on to see them. So let's try that. And then it also lists the second overload, which takes two strings. Very nice. Now, finally, uh, I know you've been waiting for the new runtime to arrive. There has been significant progress on the new runtime. Uh, in fact, I rewrote the full spec about uh, how this, this should work. So that's why there has been some delay. That said, um, the biggest missing piece in the puzzle is uh, support for closures. So once NIMP's closures work with the destructor-based runtime, I think it's ready to give it a serious try. Um, as I mentioned in the blog post, uh, the new runtime is uh, very promising for uh, NIM code that wants to uh, use all your uh, CPU cores and it's also better for uh, resource embed res <coughs> memory constraint devices. Okay, that's it from my part. Uh, also, please watch the upcoming other two videos. Bye.